Hi, I'm in my kitchen, very small kitchen, and I'm just going to share how I develop my black and white film here at home. Um, if you don't have access to a lab, if you just want to do it yourself, um, I just personally love the entire process of photography, so this is for me part of that process. Um, also to save money, if you shoot a lot of film, it definitely can save you some money to do this at home. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom the lens into my, to my little setup and go from there. Today I have a couple rolls of black and white film that I shot in the Hasselblad. Um, so I'm going to be developing some 120 film. My ingredients for today, a tank with two reels that I can use to develop them. Now, the cool thing about these reels is in this particular size tank, I could do three rolls of um, 35 millimeter film, um, or I can do two rolls of 120 with the same reels. The way this works is, um, there's a little groove that actually pulls these two apart and you're just going to connect them a little bit further apart so this would be your 35 millimeter position this is your 120 position so now I've got two reels normally I have to develop black and white one roll at a time because they have different um, developing times. This one I just got really lucky that the developer that I'm using, which is the Rodinol, actually wants six minute developing times for both of these films. So I got really lucky that I'm going to be able to develop both at the same time. So I, need, I have a dark bag over here that I'm going to use to get these loaded onto the reels into the tank in complete dark. Once they're in the tank, they're protected from light, so I can do the rest outside of the dark bag, and you don't need a dark room for this at all. You really just need a dark space for loading them into the tanks. Once they're in the tanks, you're fine. So you can load them into the tanks um, either in a dark bag or if you have a dark closet or a bathroom that doesn't have any light, you can do it in there. As far as chemistry, you need a developer, a stop bath, I use the Kodak brand stop bath, fixer, and an archival wash. An optional um, tool at the end is to use a um, wetting agent, which is kind of like a soap. It makes the film, cleans off the film and makes it easier for it to dry without any streaks on it. Um, and then each of these will actually tell you right on the bottom um, the dilution level for each one. And sometimes they just give you a ratio, so I find it handy to keep a notebook so you can do the math and then not have to do it every single time. You can just remember or have a way where it's written down how much of each chemical you need. The other thing you need is water that is specifically 20 degrees um, Celsius, which is about 68, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the water that came out of my tap was about 20 degrees, so I did have to add um, a little bit of water out of the fridge to bring it down to the right temperature. But now that it's there, this is the water I'll use for developing. Um, and then you do need some graduated cylinders just to mix what's going to go in the tank. Now these bottles back here and the funnel, these are for the stop bath and the fixer, um, obviously labeled. And that is because of all these chemicals here, these are the two that can actually be reused. Um, I would reuse what's in here, but the last time I mixed it, I only mixed enough for um, half a liter because I was only doing one roll. So I'm going to have to mix some more. All right, so my first step is 
So the dark bag looks like a t-shirt. You have armholes with elastic that keeps light from getting in and a double zipper compartment. So I need my tank. I need the post that goes, um, that holds the reels in the tank. I need that to be in my dark bag. And I need the lid to go in the dark bag with me. These have a specific direction the film goes, so I like to position them in the bag in a way that I, I already know which way the film is going to go. And then I need my film. opening up the roll of film and unraveling it and eventually you get to the film that is taped to the backing paper and when you want to be careful when you're detaching it that the piece of tape doesn't make a piece of film stick to itself you also want to be careful not to scratch the emulsion so just hold the negative by the edges All right. so I've detached it from the backing paper and now I'm putting it onto the reel First roll is on its reel. Going to the second one. So now I'm threading that center post through both reels. And into the tank. So this is what they were attached to. So as you can see with this one, that's half of the piece of tape that was holding the film onto this backing paper. That's where I unraveled it. And then hang on to these because you might need them in the future for loading another roll of film. Now, a first step, a lot of people don't have, yeah, I guess it's one of those optional steps. I always like to wash the film first, so I'm going to just pour some water in here. I'm just going to let the film sit in water while I mix my developer. So I already did my measurements 
um, and I need 40 milliliters of this developer. And I need 1,000 milliliters of water at 20 degrees specifically. Now, before I put that in there, I just need to grab a timer because the six minutes are very crucial. And I want to make sure I start counting down my six minutes as soon as I know that the chemistry is touching my film. Now the other part of the tank is an agitation rod. I'm going to agitate by spinning this back and forth for a full minute at the beginning and then I just need to agitate for about 10 seconds every minute and what that does is just make sure that the chemistry is constantly being refreshed. Um, the chemistry that's touching the film is fresh. I do sometimes use metal tanks and reels. They're harder to load, and in order to agitate, you actually have to um, invert it, shake it around. They don't come with the handy rod like this one. Okay, so that's the first minute. Um, and what I'll do in the meantime is mix the fixer that I need. So now I'm going to mix the stop bath. So for this one, I need 16 milliliters of this. I'm going to agitate this for another 10 seconds. And that 16 milliliters is for one liter, so I just need to top it off to a liter. So time for another 10 seconds here. I'm mixing another batch of water and I'm going to need some out of the fridge to make it 20 degrees. Ok, 
Okay, time for another 10 seconds here. So I've mixed another jug of water at 20 degrees. The stop bath is ready. So I wear an apron when I do this because some of these chemicals do stain clothing. That's also why I put this down so I don't stain the countertop. And I do clean thoroughly before I do, before any cooking or eating happens again in here. You definitely don't want to mix photochemistry with food. Um, when I used to work in a lab, we had such strict rules, like the break room where we ate our lunch had to be completely separate from any of this stuff, so OSHA would not be happy with this. So our six minutes are up. I'm going to dump out the developer. And we add the stop bath. The stop bath is just a two minute process. And what we're actually doing is we're stopping the chemical process that, de that the developer started. Um, and for this, we're gonna agitate for the first full minute. So we just have about 15 seconds left of the stop bath. This can be reused, so I'm going to save it. Another money saving tip. Um, the fixer and the stop bath, not only can they be reused, but they can be reused for paper. So if I, if I were to put together my dark room, and print, I could use the same stop bath I already mixed, as well as the same fixer I've already mixed. some fixer. And we need 200 milliliters of this. Don't worry, you have more. water till I get to a liter. Um, this process, according to the bottle, is five minutes. I like to do six. I like to give it a little bit more time. And just like the developer, we agitate for the first minute. 
and then 10 seconds every minute after that. As you reuse the fixer and the stop bath, um, you do have to add a little bit of time because the um, the chemistry does become exhausted after a while. If you finish the entire process all the way to the washing and hanging to dry and your negatives look a little bit purple, it means the fixer was starting to get exhausted or it didn't fix long enough. And if I stick to the five minutes that the bottle says I about half the time end up with a slight purple um, tinge to my negative, so that's why I always give it an extra minute. Cool thing is, is you can put it back in to fix. Um, there is such a thing as fixing too long. It's not something I can just let it sit for however. It's not an arbit arbitrary amount of time. But if you get all the way to the end and your negatives are purple, you can definitely fix them again. Fixer can deteriorate negatives. Um, that's actually why the next step is a very specific type of wash. We can't just use water to wash off the fixer because we, every step we're actually not just um, washing the negatives with chemistry, we're actually initiating and stopping chemical reactions. So water is just isn't enough to stop the chemical reaction of fixer. So I'll give it another 10 seconds until our time is up. And after the fixer, um, once it's been fixed, the negative is actually no longer sensitive to light, so we can actually take a peek at it too. All right, that's our six minutes. If you're reusing or storing chemicals that are already mixed like this, you want to make sure the bottle you use is dedicated to that because you can contaminate. All right, this is our next step, but before that, take a peek at these just because we can. So I don't want to unravel these, but I can actually see the edges between the frames. Let me see if they will show up. If you can see the edges there between the frames so that I know that they developed properly. Now this one here does look a little purplish, but I'm willing to bet most of that washes off in the next step. All right, so now we want this. And I need 13 milliliters of this.
that's going to make a leader as well. So this is just going to be two minutes, so I'm setting a two minute timer. And just like the stop bath, I'm going to do this one for, I'm going to agitate this one for the first full minute because remember we're not just removing the fixer, we're actually stopping the chemical process the fixer started. so you can actually see what we're doing. So the next step after this is to wash the negatives. I don't know if you can tell from there, I actually attached a hose to my um, kitchen faucet to make this process easier. That way I can just put the hose into here, let water run from the bottom up, repeatedly. If I let the water run, I can just walk away from it for about 10 minutes. I try to minimize the water waste, so I actually do a lot of um, just agitate and dump the water and wash it for about five minutes instead. And then this will be the last chemical we use. Alright, so this part's done. So. So remember that one roll that was really purple? It's a lot less purple now, so a lot of that comes off. And then what I do is I just put the hose in here. Um, if you buy a negative washer, that's exactly what it is really. Is a, it's a long tank that you put your reels in and uh, has a hose going into the bottom, running water through it. So my little hose here allows me to do the same thing. So because I don't want to wash for a full 10 minutes, What I do is a series of agitate and dump. Okay, so these have been washed for about six minutes. And our final step. is going to be the wetting agent. So this is kind of a soapy substance. We need very little of it. I only need five milliliters of it. But what this does, it's kind of like Windex for your film. It'll make sure that it dries without any streaks. The temperature doesn't matter for this, so I'll just top it off. So see, it suds up a little bit. It's a little soapy. This one isn't like a soak and agitate or anything. It really just needs to 
kind of rinse the negatives. Now here's the fun part. We're finally done and ready to hang these up to dry. So this is the part that a lot of people use a squeegee for. I don't like using the squeegees because usually they just scratch my negatives. So I just use what's called a Kim wipe. They're like lint-free cleaning wipes. Oh, there's the end. Look at those perfectly exposed negatives and perfectly developed film and you'll know because this is nice and clear. Just a wipe and two fingers is enough. So all I'm going to do now, kind of behind the scenes, is hang this up to dry. See that right there is the tape that was attaching it to the backing paper. So I'm going to turn the camera around in a second. Our last step is hanging them up to dry. You want to make sure you use two clips on the top and two on the bottom. That's going to keep the, the film from curling inward and make it easier to scan them or print them later. You also want to make sure that however they're hanging, they're not touching the wall. So my little hanging wire is a good maybe two-thirds of an inch away from the wall so that there's space behind them. I don't have to worry about them getting stuck to the wall since they're still wet. And they have two clips on either end, so I also don't have to worry about them curling too much. So thanks for hanging out and developing these rolls of film with me.